to evaluate the expressions, answer in degrees and radians. Notice all the expressions involve the inverse sine function or arc sine function, which for review has a domain or possible inputs of all the possible sine function values from negative one to positive one, and the range or possible outputs must be an angle from negative pi over two radians to positive pi over two radians, or from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees, which means in standard position, the output must be from zero to pi over two radians, or from zero to 90 degrees, or from zero to negative pi over two radians, or from zero to negative 90 degrees. So the output for the inverse sine function will always be in this interval. And since sine theta is equal to y on the unit circle, to simplify the given expressions, we will be looking for y coordinates on the unit circle. The first expression is inverse sine of zero, which means we are looking for an angle in the range of the inverse sine function, or in this interval, that has a sine function value of zero. We'll notice this is the point on the unit circle where the y coordinate is zero, which means the terminal side of the angle we are looking for must intersect the unit circle at this point. In standard position, the initial side is also going to be this ray, and therefore the angle we are looking for is zero degrees or zero radians. So inverse sine of zero is equal to zero degrees or zero radians. Next we have inverse sine of negative one half. So now we are looking for a y coordinate of negative one half in this interval or in the first or fourth quadrant, which is this point here, where again the y coordinate is negative one half, which means the terminal side of the angle we are looking for is this ray here, and the initial side is along the positive x-axis, the angle is not 330 degrees or 11 6 pi radians because it must be in the range of the inverse sine function. So rotating clockwise, we have this angle here, which is negative 30 degrees or radians, negative pi over six radians or negative 1 6 pi radians. Inverse sine of negative 1 half equals negative 30 degrees or negative 1 6 pi radians. Notice when the angle is negative, the angle is not going to be labeled for us. We will have to determine the angle on our own. Next we have inverse sine of square root three divided by two. This point on the unit circle has a y coordinate of positive square root three divided by two, and it will also give us an angle in the range of the inverse sine function. This is the terminal side of the angle we are looking for, and therefore in standard position, the angle we are looking for is 60 degrees, or in radians, pi over three radians, or one third pi radians. Inverse sine of square root three divided by two is equal to 60 degrees, which is equal to one third pi radians. For the last example, we have inverse sine of negative square root two divided by two. Because the sine function value is negative, we know the point will be in the fourth quadrant. Here's the point we are looking for where the y coordinate is negative square root two divided by two, which means the terminal side of the angle we are looking for is this angle here. But in standard position, we need to rotate clockwise, so the angle is in the range of the inverse sine function, and therefore the angle we need is this angle here, which is not 315 degrees or 7 fourths pi radians, because you rotate it clockwise. This is negative 45 degrees, or in radians, negative pi over four radians, or negative 1 fourth pi radians. Inverse sine of negative square root two divided by two is equal to negative 45 degrees which is equal to negative one-fourth pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.